It's Adam here for PC Monitors and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Dell S2419H. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel towards the right side. There's also a vertical slit style power LED which glows a gentle white when the monitor's on and flashes if it's in a low power state so it loses signal to the PC or whatever you've got connected to it. There's a little sort of quick menu that comes up when you press any of the buttons. The first two are custom keys, so you can actually customise them in the OSD, and I'll come on to that shortly. But by default, the first one controls the preset mode of the monitor. There are various different options, and they're explored in the written review. Comfort view, which is a low blue light setting, gives a much warmer appearance to the image and reduces the intensity of the blue colour channel, so that's good if you're after a sort of relaxing viewing experience and it's useful in the evening when you should cut out energizing blue light as much as possible. Custom color allows you to customize the red, green and blue color channels which is of course useful for calibrating the monitor. Some of the other presets have various options assigned to them which aren't available in other presets but I'll come on to that very shortly. Next there's a volume control so you can control the volume of the integrated speakers of the monitor I mentioned these in the written review, they're actually quite decent, especially for a monitor of this size, so they're certainly usable and I actually use them in place of my headphones sometimes when I wanted a sort of more audible sound experience, I wanted to sort of let someone else in the room hear something or I just for whatever reason got sick of wearing my headphones. There's the main menu system and then there's just an exit button there as well. The main menu has various different sections to it. First there's brightness slash contrast, which is exactly what it says on the tin. It allows you to adjust the brightness or contrast of the display. Next is input source. You can manually select HDMI 1 or HDMI 2, so the two HDMI ports on the monitor. Or you can have the monitor automatically select the input for you. Now if you're using multiple devices, you probably want to have auto select off, and then you can manually select the device that you want to use instead. And there's an option to reset the input source to the factory defaults. So I guess that's auto select on as I've got there now. Next there is colour and this allows you to access the preset mode. So an another way of accessing the preset modes. You can change the input colour format. RGB is what you would use for any PC system, most games consoles as well, most devices these days. But for some older systems, um, perhaps a DVD player that maybe doesn't support an RGB signal, you can change that to YPBPR instead, so that's just for compatibility if you need it. And there's an option to reset the colour menu to the factory defaults. Next there's display, there's an aspect ratio setting, so if you're Using a non-native resolution, which is 4x3 or 5x4, you can select these to have the image displayed more appropriately for that. Whereas if you've got it set to wide 16x9, it will just stretch and use interpolation and stretch across the whole of the screen and fill all of your pixels up instead and look distorted. There's a sharpness option, which allows you to adjust the sharpness of the monitor. I found 50 optimal but you can adjust this according to your preferences in increments of 10%. There's dynamic contrast, that's greyed out in some of the presets, including the custom one that I'm using at the moment. But if I switch to, I think either movie or game will have it activated or activatable. So there's now the option to enable dynamic contrast. And this is explored in the written review, I'm not really going to go through it again, but I just wanted to show you that the option isn't always greyed out. And now I'm running the game preset. If I go back to the colour menu, you'll see there are a couple of extra options. Hue and saturation. So this is a digital saturation adjustment, a bit like NVIDIA Digital Vibrance. So it, if you increase this, it will increase saturation, but it will also crush your shade variety. It pulls shades towards the edge of the gamut without expanding the gamut itself. And it um, just makes things look sort of artificial. But some users do like to increase the saturation a bit and you can do that if you want, but just be aware that or you can decrease the saturation and it becomes completely monochrome eventually. But just be aware if you do this, not only does the accuracy of the image suffer, you also don't have access to the custom colour 
advantage of being able to adjust the colour channels independently. Next there's audio. That allows you to change the volume of the integrated speakers or enable or disable them so you can mute them like that if you prefer. Max audio and this just improves the richness of the sound a bit and again I explore this in the written review, the sound output of the monitor is pretty decent with this on. And there's an option to reset the audio to the factory defaults. Next there's menu which has some options related to the OSD itself. You can change the language that the OSD is displayed in. There's a transparency effect, so you can increase how transparent the menu looks. If you really want to, if you really want to challenge, you can have it looking like this, so you can hardly see it at all, or you can have it completely opaque if you prefer. Or well, the default of 20 works quite well for me. Timer. This is the idle timeout period, so. It's how long the menu system will remain on the screen after the last button press before automatically disappearing. And you can change this between 60 and 0 seconds, um, or 5 seconds, or something low. Let's see. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. Yeah, 5 seconds. So if you're really, really quick, you can have it set to 5 seconds. But whatever you set it to, you can, of course, manually exit the OSD by using the back feature, which is the last button. Not the power button, but the one next to that. You just press that a few times and it goes away. Next is Personalize. This allows you to change the shortcut keys. So I mentioned um, the first two keys. I called them custom keys, but they call them shortcut keys on Dell monitors. Um, you can customize them. So one of them is set to preset modes by default. You can change it to brightness or contrast, input source, aspect ratio or volume. And the nice thing as well, if, you, if you're like me and you like to use a low blue light setting in the evening but you like to very quickly switch to your normal settings in the daytime, what you could do is assign the low blue light setting to one of the shortcut keys and you can then set your normal preset mode, which in my case is custom colour, to the other shortcut key and you can very quickly switch between the low blue light setting or your regular settings just with one button press and when you press the regular settings because it's custom color you do get a little thing to adjust the red green and blue color channels but it certainly makes activating the low blue light setting very quick and also returning to your regular settings nice and quick as well so it's nice and convenient there's also a power button LED feature you can I showed you the power button before if you prefer you can have that so it's set to off during active which means when the monitor's on that power LED will go away I found the power LED completely undistracting just a gentle glowing white but you know some users don't like that on so you can always have it off if you prefer there's an option to reset the personalization menu to the factory defaults finally there is others so there's display info this just shows you some basic information about the monitor, for example the model, the input source, the resolution and refresh rate currently being run. DDC slash CI. This is the plug and play functionality of the monitor which would allow you to use certain software to control the OSD. So just leave that switched on, it doesn't do any harm whether you're using that software or not. You can turn that off if you're using some strange old system which probably can't even connect to this monitor and has some weird compatibility issue. LCD conditioning. This is a feature on many Dell monitors and what this does is it's designed, as it says here, this feature will help reduce minor cases of image retention. I didn't notice any image retention on this monitor. I wouldn't expect to necessarily see some, but on any LCD monitor you can get some image retention from time to time when certain patterns are displayed for too long or whatever. So if you do happen to notice any of that, you can do the LCD conditioning cycle and what, what it'll do is it'll run through various different shades of the monitor so it's black here, white, then it'll go through various different colours. And it'll just do that itself and eventually hopefully the image retention um, or almost certainly the image retention will go.
If you have stuck pixels on your monitor, now this isn't something which is specific to this model and I don't actually have any on my unit and it can just be any monitor which you can get stuck pixels on, but if you do have some stubborn stuck pixels and you want to try and unstick them, you can try running the LCD conditioning cycle, perhaps overnight, for a long period of time, and it might just get rid of them. There are no guarantees though, and um, there are also various YouTube videos which will cycle through the colours even more quickly and could potentially be more effective for that. Next, this is something which shows you the firmware used by the monitor, the service tag, an option to reset the Others menu to the factory defaults, and an option to reset everything to the factory defaults. So that's all there was to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Dell S2419H. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, alongside information about how you can support the work that we do.